What's up guys, it is Brown from the BTN HD, and yes, I just got two new servers in the 9 to 5 job. Uh, I have the slightest clue what type of servers, what type of memory processor, I just, I don't even know what type of model. All I know, they are 1U Dell servers, replacements for our domain controllers. Uh, we are currently running two PowerEdge 860s that are running a Windows Server 2008 R2 Service Pack 1 for the operating system. Again, the whole plan for these two physical machines is to install Server 2019, add them to our current domain controller, and then start decommissioning the two that we have and make these two guys our primary uh, domain controller within our 9 to 5. So I'm super excited. Again, I have the slightest clue what type of specifications my IT manager got on these two machines. We're going to unbox them. Uh, we have a slip right here. I'm gonna take my knife out, slice it up real quick. I think typically for Dell, the slip that's attached to the box, there you go, has like the specifications. Oh, awesome, cool. So it looks like we got two PowerEdge R240 servers. <gasps> hmm, interesting. All right, so, we go over some of the specifications of how he got it specced out and put this stuff to the side. Hopefully they're really, really good. And uh, we're gonna unbox them real quick. All right, so what comes inside the box? Super simple, we have a heavy gauge power cable. Boom. Uh, each server came with one heavy gauge power cable. So that basically tells me that there's only one power supply. Ugh. You know, I don't like servers with only one single power supply. But hey, I didn't spec this out. All right. So I'm just happy I got two brand new uh, Power Edge R240s, which will replace our old Power Edge 860s. Uh, don't get me wrong, the A60s are great machines. It's, it's just, you know, you need to upgrade, right? Uh, it comes with the safety, uh, you know, information guide. Comes with the, the Dell EMC Power Edge R240 getting started guide. Got some more information right here. Life cycle controller information. And then you have the Enterprise Dell warranty, right? So. Each server came with this. We're going to put this stuff to the side because we don't need it anymore. And here goes the servers. I got each one on top of each other. It's beautiful. Looks like we only have two bays, 3.5. Uh, it's okay. Awesome. Beautiful. Ah, cool. All right, so if I turn these guys around so we can take a closer look at some of the ports. All right, so in the back, pretty self-explanatory. Again, we have one power supply. We have uh, two. We have two gigabit uh, Ethernet jacks, RJ45s. It looks like we have two USB for our keyboard and mouse. We have a VGA to insert our monitor, and then I think this is a serial port. Cool, interesting, awesome. Got a bunch of empty slots, which uh, my IT manager did not configure. But the fact that there's only one power supply, oh, that, that's. Oh, that's driving me nuts. All right, so let me stop talking. I'm gonna take one of these servers. I'm gonna plug in the keyboard and mouse and a monitor. We're gonna power it on and uh, we will take a closer look. All right, so I got the keyboard, mouse, monitor hooked up to the R240. Yes, power and everything is hooked up. Power button is actually located on, if you're looking at the server this way, on your right hand side, you got your power button. Uh, you have an additional USB port, but this one is actually 2.0. The two USB ports at the back of the 240 or the R240 is actually 3.0. And last but not least, underneath this USB port at the front, uh, we have a, I believe, a micro USB port. Cool. All right, so we're going to power this guy on. 
and you're probably saying to yourself, how are you going to image this machine? Ugh, I love that. Gotta make sure I pay attention. I think it's like, what, F2 to get in. So I'm gonna press F2 real quick. And then I'm gonna go over some of the specifications of how my IT manager got these two machines. Now, press F2 like a man, man. So I wanna get into BIOS, F2, awesome. All right, so you're probably asking yourself, hey, Bernardo, how are you going to image this machine? Are you going to use SCCM? Are you going to use MDT? No, and no, I'm going to do old school. Uh, I actually burned the Windows Server 2019 ISO inside this flash drive. I'm gonna boot into it. I'm gonna go old school. All right, so let's go over some of the specifications. Now, both PowerEdge R240 servers are running the following. They're both running an Intel Xeon E2124 processor with a clock speed of 3.3 gigahertz. Uh, what else? Eight gigs of memory, only one hard drive. Oh, ugh. I know I have two bays. It looks like 3.5 is the size of each bay, but it looks like we only have one terabyte, 7.2 RPM SATA hard drives. Oh my gosh. And again, one power supply, which is actually 250 watts. It doesn't have any operating system installed. It doesn't have the CD-ROM or anything like that. All right, so again, I'm gonna go old school. I'm actually going to boot this guy up. I got one of those flash drives that is a type C and a USB. So like when you try to insert the USB side and it pushes it, it the type C section kind of like pops out. It's, it's crazy. All right. So I have full control with the mouse with the new Dell BIOS, which is awesome. We are going to go inside, I believe, system BIOS. Sorry, it doesn't look like the flash drive is being read inside BIOS. So what I'm going to do is uh, control alt delete. We're gonna do a reboot. Let's say F11, because I got the boot manager. There's a good chance that the flash drive will be part of the boot manager and I could just go directly in there rather than going to BIOS, which I'm hoping that's the case. Okay, so we are going to pick the One Shot BIOS boot menu. Let's click on that. It's gonna boot into this. Bam, it sees the disconnected to the front USB, which is this guy right here. Awesome, we are going to select that. And if everything works well, it should automatically boot into that flash drive and then we could uh, start installing our operating system. Let's see what happens. All right, so I'm going to cut it right here. Uh, I'm going to show you guys how I am actually going to configure these two physical machines within my 9 to 5, but I'm going to do it within a virtual environment, all right? Can't really show you what I'm going to do at my 9 to 5 job because, you know, there's a lot of security stuff that I can't just, you know, show you guys. But I am going to show you right now in the lab, virtualize everything, and we're gonna do everything step by step. So let's get right into that. All right, so you guys saw the two new servers that I received at my nine to five job. Uh, before I even touched the physical machines, I wanted to test everything within a lab, and this is how I did it. Okay, so first things first, I'm doing everything within a Hyper-V environment. I created a DC-03 and a DC-04. Both machines are actually running Windows Server 2008 R2. As you can see, both of them are domain controllers. If I open up PowerShell within DC04 and I run the command of net dom query FSMO, it's going to tell me that the DC03 runs the schema master, the domain namings master, the PDC, the RDI, and the infrastructure master. Now within Hyper-V, I created DC01, and DC02. Now these two machines are the real machines. These are the new machines. And if I open them up, they're both running server 2019 because in reality, uh, this is what I'm trying to do. Those two new machines that I got, those R240s, I'm actually going to install server 2019 and add them into the 2008 R2 environment and then I'm going to promote these two machines. Now, both machines, I already installed the operating system on them. I pushed out all the Windows update and I added them into the domain controller. Now, you don't really need to do this because when you promote the servers to a domain controller, they automatically add them to the Active Directory. Uh, I just skipped that part and just added them manually. I also created a Windows 10 machine 
and this is actually version 1909 and it's part of the active directory now on 03 dc03 which is actually running windows server 2008 r2 i open up the active directory users and computer utility and from here i right clicked on my domain and I clicked on raise domain functional level. On the drop down menu, I only have one option. So I clicked on raised. And from here, I'm gonna click okay. And we're done, click okay. Now I open up the active directory domains and trust. I right clicked on the primary node and I clicked on raise forest functional level. Click on the drop down. I only have one option. I'm going to raise it to the 2008 R2. So that's the option that I'm going to pick. I'm going to click on raise, click okay here. Okay, if you want to double check to make sure everything was raised up if you open up the Active Directory users and computers utility and you right click on your domain name and you go to properties, you're going to see that the domain functional level and the forest functional level was raised to 2008 R2. Now within DC01, I'm going to click on start and I'm going to open up server manager and within server manager, we are going to click on manage. Within manage, we are going to click on add roles and features. Uh, once this pops up, we are going to click on next, next again, next again. We need to locate the Active Directory Domain Services. We are going to give it a check mark. We are going to add all the features. We are going to click on next here, next here, next, install. Once the installation is done, you're going to get this. And we are going to click on promote this server to a domain controller. You're going to get this wizard. Now, if you did not add the machine into your Active Directory, uh, most likely you will enter your domain name and then you will click on change and provide a enterprise account that is able to add this machine into the active directory. Okay. Once you're done with that, click on next. If everything works well, it should take you here, provided a password, confirm the password and then click on next, next here, next here, next here is going to prep the schema for you and also prep the domain. Click on next next here awesome got that green check mark and then click on install you're going to get this just click on close it's going to reboot the machine i'm actually logging into dc03 and opening up the active directory users and computers and within the domain controllers node you're going to see your new domain for me it was dc01 awesome now you're going to do the same thing for dc02 and same process when you get to this point right here just click on promote the server to a domain controller Follow the prompts. You're going to get this again. Click on close. It's going to reboot Then go back inside the Active Directory users and computers application. Go inside the domain controllers node and you're going to see your new domain. So right now you got four domains. Zero one and zero two are the new servers. For me, in the real world, uh, they're actually the Power Edge R240s. Okay. Zero three and zero four are actually the Power Edge 860s that I'm trying to replace. Now, within DC01, I'm going to click on Start and open up Windows PowerShell. Now, the first command that I'm going to run is this I'm going to hit Enter. All the roles are actually attached to the DC03, but I want to move all these roles into one of the new servers. We're going to run the following command of move AD directory server operation master roles with a parameter of identity and the new server name, which would be DC01 for me, with another parameter of operation master roles and whatever roles you want the new server to have, okay? Uh, you are able to split it up, but for this example, I am actually taking all the roles on 03 and moving it into DC01. Once you hit enter, you're going to get this. Do you want to move the operation master role? Uh, you're going to hit A for yes for all, hit enter, done. If you run the same command that you did in the beginning and you hit enter, you're going to see that DC01 is now the primary domain controller that's running all the operation master roles. Now for DC03 and DC04, you need to decommission them. So log into those machines. You're going to click on start and click on run. And we're going to type in DC promo, hit okay. You're going to get this, click on next, click okay here, click next. We're going to uncheck this, click next here, provide a password, then confirm it. This password is for the local administrative account for this machine. And then click on next, next here, give a check mark to reboot on completion. And then once it's done, it's gonna reboot. Now go back inside DC01, click on start, and we are going to open up the Windows administrative tools. And from here, we are going to open up the Active Directory users and computers. And then from here, we are going to click on the domain controllers node, and you're going to see that 03 is not there anymore. 
If you go inside the computer's node, you're going to see that 03 is there. So 03 is no longer a domain controller, right? You're going to do the same thing with 04, same process. Click on start, click on run, DC promo, follow the prompts. Make sure you um, check off reboot on completion. It's going to reboot. If you go back inside the domain controller node, you're, you're going to see that DC 04 is not there anymore. If you go inside the computer OU, DC 04 is there. Awesome. Now, if you log into one of the machines within your infrastructure, like for my example was BTNHD Win, which was the Windows 10 machine. If I open up the PowerShell command, I did a CMD, and from here I echo uh, login server. And I, if I hit enter here, it's going to give me DC01. And that's it, guys. Hopefully, you guys enjoy this video. Make sure to hit that thumbs up. Also, do not forget about punch, elbow, and smashing that subscribe button to get the latest and greatest from this guy. And I catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.